I used to be a Chain of Memories hater. Back when I played the remaster on PS4 in 2017, I used to despise playing this game. I even had to look up walkthroughs on how to beat Vexen just because he pissed me off so much. Back in the day, I was basically a filthy casual when it came to Kingdom Hearts and basically just hammered the X button to win. But I've actually come a long way since then and have actually grown a much bigger appreciation for this title. Basically, a couple things happened. Back when Kingdom Hearts 3 was released, I went to my local GameStop and actually started chatting up a bunch of Kingdom Hearts fans. We were talking strategies and previous games and about which ones were our favorites. And one brave soul in the bunch said that Chain of Memories was his favorite. Of course, we all dogged on him because all of us hated Chain of Memories. But then he looked at me and said, I know it's not a lot of people's favorites, but if you go back and learn the game, you might actually find the fun in it. And honestly, I took that to heart when the second thing happened, Castle Oblivion. Castle Oblivion is a tabletop RPG that is literally the entirety of Chain of Memories as a physical game made by yours truly. It's purely a fan project, I don't intend on selling it, I just made this out of passion. This project forced me to play the entirety of Chain of Memories over again, hitting every boss with single Kingdom Key cards to gauge out their HP, counting each EXP totals for enemies and writing down encounters, even designing how the game plays. I essentially beat the game Kingdom Key only. And I have to say, Seeing every slate in action, learning all the boss patterns, including Vexen, just showed me how much was actually thought through in creating this title. What used to be one of my least favorite titles became almost a top 5 game for me. But of course we're talking about the remake, ReChain of Memories. For those of you who don't know, Chain of Memories was originally released on the Game Boy Advance. This is basically the starting for Square Enix putting random Kingdom Hearts games on random consoles. Yes, this is where it all started. You can thank Chain of Memories. Wait, I'm supposed to be telling people that Chain of Memories actually isn't that bad? F Being totally honest, I had such a hatred for Chain of Memories that I totally forgot that the Game Boy Advance version, that it even existed. So, if I'm gonna have a newfound appreciation for Chain of Memories, I gotta play it in its original form. So I found a copy cheap at a pawn shop, and I decided to give it a go. And... It is definitely... A game for the Game Boy Advance. In this video, we're going to be going over the differences and similarities between the original Game Boy Advance version and the remake. I'm also going to be talking about my experiences as well as my opinions on both Sora and Riku's story. So this right now is your spoiler warning. I will be talking about the story as well as its endings. So be advised, this is your one spoiler warning. If you haven't played this game yet and you want to not be spoiled, click off the video now. So basically what we're going to be asking is, was it better that it was made for the PlayStation 2 onward? Or should it have just stayed a Game Boy Advance title? We're going to answer this question together. Without further ado, this is Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories for the Game Boy Advance. For the most part, the games are pretty similar in both story and structure. Sora and the gang come across Castle Oblivion, a creepy man in a black coat tells them to play cards, they all lose their memories and gain new ones thanks to Namine, and Larkseen calls Sora a toy. Bitch, this is a 12 year old boy! Once the FBI gets Jonah, you're going next! Seeing the story play out in this text box format is definitely an interesting experience. I'm used to these kinds of games, but it was definitely weird having a Kingdom Hearts game with no voice acting at all. Stay on your side, Union Cross. Even the cutscenes that were eventually brought over to the remake had no voice acting at all, just text that showed up on screen. But I gotta say, these sprites look great. They felt like a slight evolution to the sprites that you see in other Game Boy games. It felt like some good nostalgia, even though I've never played this game before. One thing that I did notice between the two games, however, is there are some writing differences. The scenes basically played out the same way, just acted out slightly differently. I think to me, the writing in the original Chain of Memories felt a little bit more aggressive and maybe slightly more mature. But it definitely threw me off in the GBA version when Axel said, it's about time you gave me one hell of a show. Didn't expect that from Kingdom Hearts. I won't lie. When Maleficent said it in Birth by Sleep, it definitely threw me off, but... Huh. Kid-friendly my ass. 
Of course, this does happen in a lot of remakes where there are some tweaks in the writing, but it definitely was an interesting detail. All in all, the story is basically the same and the same pacing. Now, do I prefer this over the remake? I think because I played the remake first, I think I prefer the voice acting and 3D cutscenes more. But for a mobile experience on the Game Boy Advance, I still think this style holds up, especially if you are used to this kind of style. As for the gameplay, well, it's kind of a mixed bag for me. The gameplay basically consists of the same loop as it is in the remake. We ascend each floor of the castle, visiting various Disney worlds we did in Kingdom Hearts 1, fighting enemies, and we get more story bits on each floor. The pacing of Chain of Memories always struck me as pretty good, and of course it's the same way as the Game Boy Advance version. The exploration is kinda... iffy. You use various map cards you gain from battles to create different rooms with various effects and enemies. You break objects for HP and MP orbs, as well as cards. In the remake, these rooms were just empty, open rooms with not a whole lot of depth to them. But dare I say, it kinda works in the Game Boy Advance version. Sure, they are about the same, but for the technology at the time, it really works for the hardware. Hell, sometimes opening the same type of room in the GBA version has different layouts, while the remake, every single time you open the same type of room, always basically has the same layout. So the exploration, while still being on the minimal side, works a lot better in the Game Boy Advance version. The combat, though, it's sort of a different story. Bases of combat include you having a deck of cards. Every attack, spell, summon, or item are connected to cards. It's like a big game of war. Cards are valued from 0 to 9. If you have a higher value than your opponent, your attack goes through. You can also stock cards to create higher values than 9, and can even pull off higher tier magic or special attacks if you have the right card set up. Zero cards are used to break any value, granted if they're played last, but can also be broken by any value, giving you a good risk versus reward setup, and is great for canceling out deck bosses' bigger attacks. You also have enemy cards that grant you passive abilities, such as Fire, Blizzard, and Thunder Boost, Leaf Bracer, Second Chance, etc. It breaks the standard of Kingdom Hearts, with the hammering of the attack button and healing when needed. At first, I hated this, and I'm pretty sure that's why other people don't like this game. But giving it another look, I find this system kind of fun. It's almost like a roguelite, with some randomness of the cards and having to work with what you have. The card-based mechanics I no longer have a problem with. It's the controls of the GBA version is where things start to get rocky for me. You have your A and B buttons that are used to select the current card and jump, respectively. The space you are in is a little more condensed, and you use the directional buttons to move around the field. Unlike the remake, the field being so condensed is actually pretty good for AoE attacks, such as gravity. But I can say that I find this field a bit more annoying to maneuver in. The lock-on system in this game kinda sucks, and is a bit tough to get used to. I can't tell you how many times that I've missed with a magic spell because I'm either locked onto the wrong enemy and I'm too close, or I don't know if I'm in the correct row to attack. Also, big enemies such as large bodies or guardians are absolute hell to fight in this game. For those who don't know, you need to get behind these enemies in order to properly attack them. They were annoying in the normal 3D games, but in here, unless you have some good slates or magic, good luck getting around them to hit them with consecutive combos. My next gripe is with the maneuver options. Besides using cards and jumping, you have a dodge roll. This has to be the worst dodge roll in the franchise, and I wish I was joking. In order to use this dodge roll, you need to double tap either the left or right button on the D-pad. Now look, I understand that the Game Boy Advance was extremely limited, only having a few select buttons, but oh my god, this roll is extremely unreliable. Enemies can relentlessly hit you, over and over, and having that extra second to try to double tap the damn button is not quick enough, and you just get pummeled into the fucking dirt. For enemies with slower attacks, sure, it works great, but I cannot tell you how frustrated I got trying to beat Ansem in Riku's campaign and would continuously die due to him just stunlocking me to death and me not being able to get out of the fucking way. Oh, we'll get to Riku shit, just wait. Stalking cards is also a pain. You use the shoulder buttons to scroll through your deck, but in order to stalk your cards, you need to press both buttons at the same time. Once again, I know the Game Boy is limiting, but I can't tell you how frustrating it is to try and set up a powerful move, 
only to have you scroll through your deck and stock the incorrect cards in the incorrect order when you have them set up perfectly. And to make things worse, as far as I know, there is no way to cancel your stock like there is in the remake. Once it's up there, it's up there. The only thing I can think of of why this isn't such a bad thing is to stop people from continuously spamming slates. The Sonic Blade spam is definitely broken. But the system of losing the first card in your stock or slate is already in play. So for that reason, I can officially say it's bullshit. Now look, once again, for those who are raging in my comments right now, I understand the Game Boy Advance is very limited on what it can do. But imagine if this was the only way you could play this game or if you picked it up for the first time when it came out. I can see people being understandably pissed and dropping this game for having some BS controls. Honestly, I feel like if this game was released for the DS, it would have been significantly better. Which it would have been entirely possible considering they were released the same month. In the remake to dodge roll, you hit square, and for stocking cards, you hit triangle. Use this setup for the Y and X buttons respectively, and this whole game got a lot easier to control. You know what, I'll even take it a step further. If the PS2 game was the original version, and it was released in this state, with the same graphics as the mobile way to play the game, I probably would have still picked it up because I was curious. Would I have hated the game still like I did back in the day? Probably. But I feel like I would have had a much less frustrating time with the controls. I don't think there would be a way to cancel accidental stocks, but I feel like the improved controls would have made this game a much better experience. But of course, that's just one man's opinion. All in all, the gameplay for the Game Boy Advance version is just okay. Exploration-wise, the Game Boy Advance version fits the best, but the remake's combat makes it the best way to play the games in terms of both maneuverability and better control. But that's just Sora. Now we gotta talk about Riku! For those who don't know, Chain of Memories is actually a two-sided experience. Once you finish Sora's story, you now have to play through Riku's story. Riku plays a bit differently. Mostly everything is the same as before, but you can't change your deck, you have no cure cards, you can reload your deck as many times as you want in an instant, and you have dark mode you can transform into when you break enough enemies' cards, depending on the value. It mostly works the same in both games, except for one feature that was added in the remake, dual mode. If you match an enemy's cards, you can go into dual mode, where you need to consecutively break cards, and if you do so successfully, you unleash a powerful attack. If you fail, you are stunned for a few seconds. This mechanic spices things up for Riku's playthrough, but unfortunately, it isn't in the GBA version. Honestly, this makes playing through his campaign kinda sluggish. Dual mode was a great way to get through battles quickly, but without it, it just feels like I'm hammering the attack button to no avail. Dark mode basically works the same, and that includes the slates that he's only able to use in dark mode. There's basically nothing else to say here. Also, I'm pretty sure Riku can jump higher than Sora. I am I the only one who noticed this? I think the biggest downside to Riku's story is the dodge roll is really noticed here. Maneuverability for Riku's story is incredibly important due to not being able to switch around his deck and set up powerful moves like Sora does. Honestly, kind of makes me glad that you don't have to fight Zexion in the GBA version, which honestly surprised me that it was just boiled down to a cutscene. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that the second phase of the final Marluxia fight doesn't exist either, which honestly is fine by me because goddamn that final fight sucked. Anyways, getting back on track, Riku's story is actually a lot shorter considering all Riku needs to do for each world is just beat the boss and move on. I got his story done in like four days and that's just me playing on my lunch breaks and after work, but I still have to give the win to the remake. Mostly because of the maneuverability and the dual mode making Riku's story a whole lot more fun to play. So in the end, what does this all mean? Is the Game Boy Advance version even worth it? Should I just skip it? No, actually. I think the Game Boy Advance version of Chain of Memories should still be considered in giving a fair shot. Mostly because it's cheap to pick up, but I think it's an important piece of Kingdom Hearts history that shouldn't be forgotten. Even though I do prefer the remake in terms of how I play this game, I really did have a lot of fun experiencing what it was like to get this game back in 2004. If there's anything that the Game Boy Advance version does very well, it helps me appreciate the remake a lot more. 
but it also helps me understand where Square was coming from when they released this title. It might not be the most favorable Kingdom Hearts game in the series, but I really do think if fans go back and try and learn the game, you never know, you might find the fun in it. Once you truly understand how this game is played, you might be surprised on how much fun you actually have with this title. Just like the GameStop fan told me back in the day. And honestly, I'm really glad I listened because if I didn't, there would be no Castle Oblivion. This video probably wouldn't exist. I never would have thought to try the Game Boy Advance version. If you weren't a fan of this game to begin with, I implore you, give it another shot. Learn the game. Try it out. Because you never know. Whether it be the Game Boy Advance version or the remake, I honestly believe that Chain of Memories is extremely underrated. And it deserves a lot more credit than it's being given. So once again, I implore you, if you think you hate this game before, you might not like it. I'm not telling you to like it. It was an eye-opener for me when I went back and actually tried to learn this game. So you never know. It might be an eye-opener for you. That might be a good piece of advice for any game in any series. I don't know. Maybe Final Fantasy XIII? It's not that bad. I'm just saying. Go back and give it another shot. You can hate it. I don't care. But if you start pissing on people because they like something that you don't, you can go fuck yourself. But with that, I'm going to end off this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Do you guys doing that YouTube. Follow me on Exit Operation Number 1. All that cool stuff. Yeah, it was kind of a shorter video. But I needed something. And this was like one of the best ideas that I could come up with. And honestly, I thought... I haven't, I, haven't been, I haven't done a Kingdom Hearts video in a while. So I've been really much on a Kingdom Hearts craze recently. And I'm starting to go through all the Kingdom Hearts games again. Because I want to make a ranking at some point in the future. So... Look forward to that. It might be a while off before that does happen, but just know that it's being worked on as well as other videos in the work. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.